Good morning, and welcome to the APG Ultrasonic webinar. Before we get started, I would uh, ask all of you to mute your uh, your audio so that we don't get any feedback or anything like that, and uh, appreciate you for joining us. So basically, for the next, I don't know, 20 minutes, 30 minutes, we'll review the ultrasonic level transmitters. And uh, some of the things that we'll talk about or has, has to do with how ultrasonic level transmitters work, some of the application guidelines that you need to know before selecting one. We'll dig into the APG ultrasonic product line, and we'll close it out with about seven or so real world applications. So before we get started, how do these guys work? So basically it's a time of flight instrument to where the sensor sends a sound wave above 20 kilohertz, until it reaches an object or a target. And then the echo is received by the transmitter. And since the speed of sound is constant, it allows for accurate distance and level measurement. And the accuracy can be as good as or better than 0.25% of the detected range. Some of the advantages of ultrasonics are, number one, obviously it's non-contact. Um, for, uh, versus other uh, non-contact measurements, uh, for example, radar, generally it consumes less power. It's easy to ship, to install, low, low maintenance required. And as we'll learn later as well, it's great for remote monitoring as well. And specifically, the APG ultrasonics have a microprocessor, which allows for more advanced control. Now we mentioned about how it works where it hits the object or the target. And it can be either a liquid or a solid. An ideal surface or a target is one that's a calm liquid or a floor or a wall. A turbulent liquid as seen on the top left here or is, uh, is one that can change the, the angle of the reflected wave and decrease the accuracy. Solids on the other hand can present challenging but acceptable applications but in a lot of cases, you'll have to reduce the range uh, required or needed um, by 50%. So for example, if it's good for 20 feet for a liquid, it'll be good for 10 feet for a, a bulk solid, for example. And some of the media uh, that has to do with that, for example, would be a powder or granules or irregular shapes such as gravels, for example. Let's be honest. When folks use instruments where they're not applicable, you can get a bad name, and ultrasonics are no exception. Ultrasonics are not suitable for the, uh, for the following environmental conditions. Vapor, heavy dust, foam, very light powders. Why? Because they disrupt the sound waves and the way it works. Also, our ultrasonics above 30 PSI, they're not suitable for that. Also, you want to be cautious of applications with high temperature, humidity, pressure, for example, a pressurized tank, they'll affect performance as well. Blanking distance or blocking distance or dead zone. This is inherent to the ultrasonic technology. The ultrasonic needs time to transition from re transmitting the pulses to receiving the echoes. And uh, within this range, the, uh, the, the depth is not measurable. And ours vary from anywhere from four inches to over a foot based on the model. And it usually increases uh, with the overall range of the sensor. One good thing about it is if you do have some echoes near the top, near the ultrasonic base, you can actually add blanking distance to ignore those, which might be helpful for some applications. Mounting, it's, uh, it's important to, that you mount the ultrasonic perpendicular to the target, mounted away from the wall or the tank. Um, for example, on the on the picture on the left there, it's uh, it's not a good good way to mount the uh, the ultrasonic. It's not perpendicular, for example. And on the picture on the right, you can see that they, they uh, mounted it near a filling stream, and obviously it's going to do its job. It'll measure the level of the filling stream, which may not be what you're trying to do with the application. So keep in mind with that, whether it's a fill stream or a ladder, a pipe, wall seams, and just keep, keep those in mind.
sometimes run into um, false targets near the top of the tank um, and you want to uh, alleviate those, whether it be a large pipe weld or a pipe mixer, a dome tank. The solution is a standpipe and basically a piece of PVC. It's mounted perpendicular to the top of the tank to, um, to protect the ultrasonic signal from the false target. And you definitely want to use one, uh, a standpipe that's a smooth surface, free from burrs or joints or anything like that, because you don't want to create an echo with that as well. And uh, as a general rule of thumb, you want to use the largest diameter pipe that you can and the shortest based on the measuring uh, range. And usually two or three inches is sufficient. And you can see on the bottom that you want to cut it. You don't want it to be even. If you keep it even, it'll probably cre create another echo. So um, that, that's helpful if you cut it between 10 to 45 degrees as well. Another, other issues or problems could be surface disruption, foam, uh, don't have a clear path to the target. And a good solution for that can be a stilling well. And you can see on the picture on the top there, uh, this is a pipe that goes almost to the bottom. And uh, it's a very important that you have a vent hole. So this allows liquid to come in and you can see the level and you wanna make sure that you mount this high enough that it's above the sensor's blanking distance. And uh, it can help to even fully eliminate issues with surface foam in some cases. And again, with this particular um, stilling well, you wanna make sure that you're not creating echoes within the pipe. So it's gotta be smooth and free from burrs or obstructions and joints as well. APG does ultrasonics very well. And we're going to learn uh, more about the product line and uh, how we can help. First of all, again, they're good for liquids and solids. We have over 11 different models, anywhere from general purpose to class one, div one, intrinsically safe as well. Can go really short tanks to four inches, all the way up to 50 feet. Um, outputs, four to 20, voltage, Modbus, we even do some uh, RS-232 as well. One of our flagship lines is our IRU series. And these are class one div two rated. And uh, these are the models with the uh, four to 20 out and optional uh, NPN transistor outputs as well as switches. And uh, we can go ranges again, as low as four inches with the 5000 series. And the 3430, for example, can go all the way up to 50 feet. And uh, these are good for outdoor applications, IP65 rating, and MPT process connection. And some folks even hang them. One of the things that sets APG ultrasonics apart from the other ones on the market are the programmability. Sometimes for challenging applications, you'd want to make some adjust adjustments to get it just right. And uh, that's what we offer. For example, here's our RST model um, that uh, you can purchase where one end goes to the ultrasonic for programming and the other goes to a USB port on your computer. And uh, with our free um, software, these are the different types of parameters that you can adjust. And some of the things that set us apart are, for example, um, the uh, gain control of the return echo. Um, you can turn it up for a, a difficult application, or if you've got a hard target, you may not need it as hard and it'll uh, probably uh, lengthen the life of the ultrasonic. Uh, also, the, uh, the amount of burst pulses that are sent from the ultrasonic, you can uh, decrease it uh, in small enclosed areas that might have multiple echoes or a soft target, you might want so, to increase that. And another thing is temperature compensation. We obviously, it, uh, uh, the ultrasonics work on this, the speed of sound and temperature adjusts the speed of sound. So ours have a built-in temp sensor, so you're able, able to make those changes with that. And uh, those are just a few of the things that we can do. You can adjust what your four and 20 milliamp points are, your max distance, you can average readings, and so on and so forth. Some of the other IRU series uh, models that we have is the 6429, and this is one that uh, has optional data logging as well, and uh, RS-232 output. 
Our most sensitive ultrasonic is the 9400 series. And uh, this one has a highly sensitive electrostatic transducer, really meant for indoor applications. Got to make sure it's a clean and dry atmosphere. However, there's even some folks that use it for things where we really don't suggest, for example, the level of snow and uh, because it's so sensitive. Now keep in mind, they really protect it very well with an enclosure. And again, it's not an application we would necessarily suggest, but it tells you the type of sensitivity that this, this series offers. We also have two LPU series, loop powered ultrasonics. And these are class one div two models. And for example, the 2127, you can see it has a keypad so that you can program it on the unit. And um, it's also IP65 rated. And you can see there, as far as the ranges for liquids, you're looking at one to 25 feet and bulk solids, solids up to about 10 feet for range. LPU 2428. Um, we, a lot of people love these, sell a lot of these. These are class one, div, div one, intrinsically safe. The range is uh, one to 25 feet. And it monitors distance, level, and it even does flow. And we'll talk about it later in an application. And also has flow totalizers built in and um, a, a strapping chart as well to where you can enter up to 32 points. We also have a system of a DST ultrasonic and a DCR display. And these DST sensors are meant to work with the DCR. And you select them uh, by the depth, for example, four to 72 inches, all the way up to one to 50 feet with the sensor. And then the sensor goes straight to the DCR display, which allows you to read the level, um, et cetera. Uh, has um, uh, analog uh, output, also four relay outputs, and even a Modbus output. And it's great for lift station control, among other things that we'll find, uh, that we'll just talk about in the application example. And um, one thing to keep in mind, you do want to um, uh, order the, the amount of cable run that you need so that when you get it out of the box, it works just as you planned. You can get cable runs off to 2,000 feet. Well, APT also does Modbus. We do Modbus very well. And this is a MNU series, a Modbus network ultrasonic. And uh, they come in different ranges, anywhere from four to 79 inches, all the way up to 40 feet. And this is a standard Modbus RTU RS-485 that you can daisy chain together. And what I mean by that is, let's say for example, you have eight tanks that are close together. If you're using four to 20s, you would have to send the home runs or the wires straight back to the controller, each one, versus a daisy chain, you can wire them all together. And uh, which saves in wiring, and you can also put everything on one network and see a lot more information, a lot of advantages to that. And uh, we sell a lot of these for remote monitoring applications as well. Our newest model is MNUIS, and this one has global hazardous area ratings, class one, div one, intrinsically safe. The accuracy is uh, plus or minus 2.2 uh, quarter percent of reading. It's fully submersible, IP68, unless you have the M12 electrical connector and then it's M12. And the ranges are anywhere from five inches to 12 feet. And uh, the, the uh, highest range is one to 25 feet. One of the unique parts of this is it has a feature called quick mode that allows you to get a reading in as, as little as 250 milliseconds. So basically if you select that, you'll get a great reading in under one second. Sell a lot of these for remote monitoring applications and hazardous areas where people just want to save battery power, want to get a great reading, and then turn it off. And that's exactly what it does. The LOE, this is um, a level over ethernet web enabled sensor. So this is a um, RS-45 master Modbus level control. And then you can purchase at different uh, ranges of tanks from seven to 180 inches, all the way up to 40 feet. And uh, this allows you to be a master to 10 different RS-45 slave sensors. It also has two discrete switches on there. 
And the output is an Ethernet TCP IP to an, uh, an internal web page or to the APG level and flow.com, which we'll talk about in a little bit. Talked about remote monitoring a bit. Um, a lot of times for tank monitoring, especially with the, um, the internet, people want to see what their tank levels are anywhere, anytime on their device, whether they're in an office or remote. And this is exactly what it allows you to do. Um, and one of the backbones of that is our RST 5003. And the input is up to 10 different Modbus connect connections that are daisy chained together, or it could be one 4 to 20 input. And the outputs is uh, an Ethernet TCP IP uh, web page or straight to levelandflow.com. And uh, what a lot of folks will do is uh, use the Ethernet connector on the back uh, from um, with internet access so that you can go straight to the levelandflow.com website. And we do offer as well with a cellular connection if that's what somebody really wants. And um, and this is really, this is what it looks like too, is it's the tank cloud. And obviously we're just talking about ultrasonics here, but uh, you can see just about any type of sensor you can send to the RST5003 and then to the Level and Flow web, website and then also get alerts. And this is what the Level and Flow website looks like. You can see uh, in the blue here that the tank is 93% full. You can see everything that you really need to see. You can uh, view your current and past readings. Um, you can manage your alarms. You can send texts, uh, messages, alarms, emails. You can configure your sensors, which is nice if you have a tough application and you make, need to make some tweaks and do it many miles away. And uh, also it has different sign-ons you know, with different permissions for different folks in the organization. And especially with uh, folks that may have a lot of sites, it allows you to see all the data in one spot, which can be very helpful. Let's talk and let's close it out with uh, some of the applications. Um, yes, ultrasonics are used for food and beverage as well. And uh, we working, we're working with a, a company in the East Coast uh, that makes ice cream, and specifically chocolate-covered ice cream bars. And uh, they have really small, 22-inch high holding tanks of liquid chocolate. And our IRU 5000 series are used to um, monitor when the fresh chocolate needs to be refilled, when it hits a low-level set point. We also talked about open channel flow. And uh, this is an example of a weir right here and someone using on the left using an IRU 5000. And right here, what they're doing is just measuring the distance of the water. And then the controller has the equations built in for the weir to measure and flow. Now, as we, as we talked about before, if you remember the LPU 2428, uh, as seen in the right application, um, that has a flow as an output, as a choice. So in the manual here, you can say, okay, I've got a flume or a weir, or you can put in a, an equation and the output will be a four to 20, just like a flow meter. And then it also has two built-in flow to totalizers where one is ongoing and one can be reset. Uh, salt trucks. If you uh, live in the Northeast or a cold area, you've probably seen a lot of these especially when it gets cold and the, um, the roads get icy. And APG is a part of it. We're working with uh, one of the turnpike authorities there to supply the DST and the DCR combo for the salt brine tanks. So it's um, monitoring the level of it, uh, as you can see in the middle picture, and based on a low level output that tells them, okay, it's time to refill it. APG does a lot of hazardous locations and uh, diesel generators are an example of that. And um, for example, if you live down south where I live, where hurricanes are an issue, want to make sure that they have diesel for the diesel generators, especially when the primary power is out. And here's an example of an LPU ultrasonics used for diesel level in the hazardous area. And the customer actually is using with an RST 5003 to send uh, alerts when it gets too low and needs needs more diesel. So you can see from example, this is what the chart of the level looks like. So it can send the alert and make sure that, uh, that the generator has diesel.
here's a simple application um, for a drinking water a reservoir where you've got a nice hard target and uh, it's used in a remote area. And the company is also using some analytical water sensors as well, so that uh, the municipality has a lot of information about the quality of the water and the level of water, so they can offer better customer service to their, their customers. This is an interesting application. This is a chemical level application using the APG LOE, the level over ethernet. You can see the, the blue wire that's coming down from the ultrasonic that's going to their router. And uh, actually outside of that uh, building is an MND, which is a Modbus, net, Modbus network display. So that when the chemical drive, uh, delivery driver is outside, they can see how much they're delivering and whether it's full or it's time to stop. And this is our final application that we'll talk about. And hang with me, because this one's a bit involved. For this application, we've got three different chemical tanks. And if you look at the bottom right tank, that control that we've used is an LOE, Master Modbus Sensor. And then to the left of that, we've got two MNU slave ultrasonics used in this network. And then if you go up from that, you can see that there's three digital gauges so that you can see how many gallons of chemicals are in the tanks. Now, if you go back to that far right tank and the LOE ultrasonic and then in blue, that's connected to the router. And that's actually sending the information to the uh, levelandflow.com so that they can, the customer can see the levels remotely and send alerts as needed. We'll be concluding this um, very soon. Um, and uh, please call us or send us an email if you have any questions. But before we get going uh, uh, with that contact information, we strongly suggest you take a look at all of our other sensors at apgsensors.com. And then for example, here you can click on support where you can see the data sheets, the install guides and all that good stuff. Uh, below is uh, the contact uh, information. Here's mine, uh, Brian R at apgsensors.com. Feel free to call me on my cell phone. And then also um, below is uh, Shaw Merrill, who's our inside sales manager and his contact information. Um, we look forward to hearing from you. And um, thanks again for joining us. We really appreciate it. Thanks. Have a great one. Bye-bye.